On May 26, U.S. President Joe Biden ordered the U.S. intelligence community to trace the origin of COVID-19. That includes investigating a theory that says the virus emerged from a lab in Wuhan, China, instead of emerging in nature. Don't get me wrong, guys. It is important to get to the bottom of things, to find the source of the virus that killed millions. It could help us prevent the next one. But the timing of the Biden probe brought many questions too. Like, why investigate now a lab leak theory that was declared by most mainstream scientists as either unlikely, extremely unlikely, or outright conspiracy theory? A short answer is the probe has been sought by many Republicans and some Democrats too, and was prompted by a Wall Street Journal report three days earlier on May the 23rd saying three Chinese scientists in Wuhan Institute of Virology fell sick in November 2019. The symptoms, the report says, could be COVID, although it could also be seasonal illnesses like a flu. Marion Koopmans, a Dutch virologist who was on a WHO mission to Wuhan, attributed the sickness of the three Chinese doctors to regular seasonal sicknesses, saying, there were occasional illnesses because that is normal. There was nothing that stood out. Shi Zhengli, China's top coronavirus expert at Wuhan Institute of Virology, said all staff had tested negative for COVID-19 antibodies. Some folks would say, wait a minute, all Chinese sources must be taken with a pinch of salt these days. And they have a right to think so. But what about American sources? This Wall Street Journal report on sick Chinese scientists was based on a previously undisclosed U.S. intelligence report. So it was a government leak turned news, an intentional leak from the U.S. intel community that became a media story that in turn prompted Biden to order an intel investigation. Are you having a deja vu? More about that later. Peter Daszak, a WHO investigator who's been to Wuhan, said on May the 27th that Biden's probe is quote-unquote not scientific, it is political. It is not something that you can really reasonably launch a major audit of. The WHO investigation team to Wuhan said it is quote-unquote extremely unlikely that the coronavirus was leaked from a Chinese lab. U.S. officials, of course, accused the trip of quote-unquote lack of transparency and access citing a lot of circumstantial evidence, but many international research teams, including one supported by America's National Institute of Science, also used sophisticated bioinformatic tools to compare genomic data from several coronaviruses, including the one that causes COVID-19, concluded that the coronavirus that causes COVID-19 almost certainly originated in nature, just like Ebola, Zika, or HIV. Now the U.S. intel community has 90 days to present their findings to President Biden. Truth be told, it is the most formidable intelligence network anywhere in the world. But if history has taught us anything, that is, it can also make mistakes. During the Bay of Pig incident in the 1960s, the CIA failed to provide President John F. Kennedy the assessment that the covert military operation on Cuba could actually fail without overt U.S. military support clouding the judgment of Kennedy and contributing to the failed attack. Before the former Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan in the 1970s, the U.S. intel community did not warn President Jimmy Carter because it assumed that the specter of a costly quagmire would deter the Soviets from doing so. And we're not even talking about the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq in 2003 and intelligence failure that President George W. Bush called his biggest regret. So back to Biden's COVID tracing mission, it is important to find the virus's truest origin. But if the mission is motivated primarily by politics, perhaps that could wait. After all, there are more urgent things to do, like boosting production and efficacy of vaccines and ensuring a fairer distribution. Because as we speak, 10 of the world's richer countries now possess some 75% of global vaccines. And tens of millions of lives are on the line in India, in Nepal, in Brazil, in Mexico, and elsewhere, battling this virus.